All right. COVID-19, everybody's worried, obviously. Well, what can you do? I am into the, you know, uh, natural health realm. Now, so Murray, uh, one of my followers, sent me this. And said, take a look, see what you think. Well, this girl is making a poultice. A poultice means, well, she's sure. I'm going to let her explain, because I'm right at the end where she's just finishing making it. All she did was cut up an uh, onion. It's very small. Now she's just crushing it up into this cloth. She's going to wrap it up and put it on her chest and let her talk. Here it goes. So the, the I've then, discovered it's the sulfur. You tie it up just so that it all stays in there. And that's the only thing I can think of. It's the sulfur that is somehow penetrating the, the skin. And listen to what she said. That's It's quick. It's easy. And everyone can do it. And what you've got to do is apply it directly onto your skin, on your chest, where you feel the pain or the inflammation. And for me, that had instant effect, and I mean immediate and dramatic, from symptoms that were escalating really quickly and dramatically. It's just stopped and then started to recede. The pain went, the inflammation receded, and I could breathe normally again. And it says in the book, just leave it there. And I found that I could leave it for at least 18 hours before needing to change it. So it's very economical as well. A few onions will be enough to last you a week. Now, the only side effect that they warn against and that I have definitely been aware of on myself is that it's very harsh on your skin and it can cause skin irritation. And they're saying if that happens, just stop. But well, when I had pneumonia and I needed it, I thought I will look after my skin later. Well, that's uh, this would be an interesting thing because right away I started to think that it might be a little harsh, and um, I, I'm thinking maybe a little castor oil. I can't see why castor oil wouldn't because castor oil it penetrates your skin very well, so it may grab a hold of the sulfur and bring it in with it, and and still protect your skin. I don't know. But I'd like to try that. <laughs> if, I, if I get it, I'd try it. Here goes. But the emergency is to get the inflammation down. Um, and then subsequently, I've just given my skin a break every so often when I felt I needed the poultice less. Um, there is also an alternative recipe, which is to cook the onion in olive oil and apply the oil. And uh, there you go. Olive oil. So basically the same thing. It says it will work with onion powder or flakes, and you can also add corn flour or other powder. So everybody will just have to experiment with what works best for them, I suppose. Just be aware of the irritation if you want to use it on small children. And if you've just got a cough or a little bit of asthma, um, apparently if you just breathe the onion, it will help already. So just. All right, I, let's let's look at the chemistry here, because I think I understand what's going on. Well, I think I, well, let's take a look. You know, I found this interesting. You look up onion, and I mean, obviously, you got sulfurs all over the place, and you look up vitamins and minerals, you got no sulfur. I, I don't know what that's all about. Anyway. All right, you know, I'm always talking about molecules and and all these different elements. Well, oxygen, that's the molecule of life. And look what's right above it, sulfur. All right? So this means that they have the same number of, of electrons in their outermost orbital that bonds with things. And sulfur is, is more reactive than oxygen, really. Um, well, I don't know if that's true or not, but they're 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 they both do a very similar thing. All right, I, this is interesting. Oxygen, you, you don't have any oxygen in your body from this stuff. Sulfur is in that same same 
molecular arrangement. I don't know if that's what's going on here, but it's, ob it's, it's obviously the sulfur. It, well, that's what I've come up with. So here's what they're talking about. Are raw onions more nutritious than cooked onions? Raw onions more nutritious than cooked onions. Dietary intern at Tufts Nutrition Center. My father went to Tufts. Onions are nothing to cry over. La, 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 la. Hold on, let me find the important stuff. Oh, here it is right here. Why do we care about sulfur in onions? Onions form sulfur compounds through an enzymatic reaction enzymes they break things down when cut or crushed so they form these compounds sulfur compounds not just necessary sulfur they make compounds when they you crush them then they they have to react with something it's just like you you breathe in oxygen and it's all of a sudden gets into a vapor it has to react with something basically it's a sim similar sort of a thing when you cut them or crush them, because now they're becoming exposed. Now, so study shows these sulfur compounds may protect against cancer, help lower blood sugar, reduce protection of unhealthy cholesterol in the body. These sulfur compounds may also block platelet clot formation and promote the breakdown of clot of blood clots. Well, they would perform, they're, they're breakdown chemicals. Yes, absolutely which helps to lower the risk of heart disease and stroke, where things build up, I guess. Eat your onions raw for maximum sulfur content. There it is right there. As cooking onions significantly decreases the quantity of the compound. Ah, so for me, it's case closed. In addition to sulfur, onions have another healthy trait going for them. The outer layers contain quercetin. Look at that. No, that's not the one I got here. I got a question around here somewhere. I was wondering about that. I in fact, I wondered where I got it from. Hold on. All right, look at this. It says, in addition to the sulfur, onions have another healthy trait going for them. The outer layers contain quercetin. So you don't want to throw away those little thicker. And this is alpha glycerol isoquercetin. An antioxidant fights harmful free radicals in the body. Those are just extra bits and pieces of molecules. Once they break them and attach them and they, they, they combine, a little piece will spit off or they'll break apart and little pieces will spit off and somebody's going to have to attach to them. And apparently, um, they're saying this is anti antioxidant means, and again, don't forget, sulfur and oxygen antioxidant I don't know I, I there's something going on between those two chemicals and it looks like the sulfur does something really good for it that's what they're saying I'm just quoting what I'm seeing here and it says well what's the what's the best thing to do eat raw <laughs> unless you don't like to taste them and then you can cook them a little bit and you still have some health benefits but you know the raw onions are, I don't know and maybe it's just this stuff right here in the raw onions. I don't know if this makes sulfur or not. I have to look into it. Alright. Apparently this sulfur poultice thing you wrap and put on your chest appears to work. This That's what she says and she's very, very, very convincing to me. Now, what I am wondering about is this... this um, chemistry that, that destroys the skin because this sulfur is a little reactive it's a it's a very reactive molecule so um i think if you try castor oil i think it might it might not bother you i was thinking about trying it. i don't have any covid but you know maybe i'll just try it to see <laughs> but if somebody else does it because it, it, even the covid might affect the way it, it bothers your skin i don't know i uh, but I would like to know if somebody ever tries this, if because she, they were she was talking about cooking it in olive oil. Well, I don't say cook it; I say put it in with castor oil. Castor oil is extremely penetrative. You know, you put it on your skin, and it, you actually your eyes will actually get watery. I'm not kidding you; it goes into you and creates watery conditions. It has a couple of well, I think it has an OH on the. 12 carbon out of 18 carbon, something like that. And I think it ends up turning into water. OH, all it's looking for is another H. And you've got yourself some water. 
So anyway, that's just there's a lot to think about here, which everybody just wants to be healthy. That's all I got to offer. All right, I was just about to wrap this up, but now that I'm coming on to this sulfur thing, I said, well, you know, let me look into the sulfur a little deeper because it, to me. It looks like if you put some more sulfur in there, you're going to have a, a positive outcome with this COVID. So, I start, because I, I am believing that the COVID is destroying the collagen fibers that are in all tissues, specifically in your lungs, because that's the first place invaded. But they say now that it also is invading all your other organs, the tissues that that surround your other organs but it starts with the lungs so my point is if we could somehow get that um, sulfur to, to make your collagen very good it, would that be good I mean is it good for your collagen let me put it that way so I look, go looking changes in collagen metabolism caused by feeding diets low in inorganic sulfur all right, so you, you need sulfur. And then I started reading it and it blew my mind. Look at this. This is what you need. This is exactly what that girl said. The effects of decreasing the level of dietary inorganic sulfur on the metabolism of skin collagen. That's the stuff that makes it do this, the el elasticity. We're studied. And that's the stuff that's a problem with this COVID. Significantly less neutral salt soluble and total collagen was produced in the skins of rats fed diets which contained, you know, 0.002% like almost nothing of sulfate compared with those fed diets containing 0.02%, huge difference in the amounts of sulfate. The soluble collagen, soluble means water, it can drift around, it can go collect and do what it's supposed to. The soluble collagen solutions derived from the skins of animals fed at low level of sulfate would not form thermal gels. Right? And these are something that are typical of normal soluble collagen solutions. It's almost like forming a, a fibrin, which is like the clotting factor, that type of thing. Something like that. It's fibers. Now, this information is indicative, so they couldn't form the fibers. Basically, that's what it means. This information is indicative of severe failure to form intramolecular cross linkages. It's the fibers. The theory was advanced that the decreased production of collagen was due to a decrease in fibroblast activity occasioned by a limitation of dietary methionine. Now, that word also strikes a little bit of you know interest in me because I talk about methylation, methylation, CG methylation. That's what does your programming. Right? In your junk DNA, it's not junk. These are huge, what they call CG islands. They're they're regions that are nothing more than a chunk of program. And then the methylation comes in, and it turns, as they call them, C, uh, let me see, C, C, G, well, it, it is a C, oh, C, P, G, C, P, G, and the, the methylation happens between the C and the G, something like that, turns it on or off. It's just like turning on and off a, a program in a, uh, turning on and off a, um, a yes or no bit in a program, right? And then you have enough of those, zillions of them, and you do in the, in these CPG regions. There's so many of them that they, it creates a program. And if that program's not right, you're screwed. And if it's if you don't have the sulfate, it looks like you may have a problem with their program. Or or the program might work right, but it sends down, it says, go make some collagen, so I don't have the stuff to make it. So well, what am I going to do? I say, oh, we're in trouble. We're going to be sick. I mean, it's looking for dietary sulfate, which normally would spare methionine from its function in furnishing sulfate for the sulfation of mucopolysaccharides. Who the hell didn't know that? 
Yeah, you should look up so, uh, collagens. Collagens, keratins, keratins, they're all structural protein, intermolecular, extracellular products to make your body tissues fibrous. Tendons, ligaments, skin. Have a wonderful day.